good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Aquaviva in San Marino. Now first things first, if I sound a little nasally, it's because I am in the late stages, I hope, of COVID, so I'm very sniffly. I'm still coughing all those little things, but I'm feeling a lot better. Feeling well enough to film. I at least hope so, so sorry if I sound a little more stuffed up than usual. It's because I am. But Aquaviva, you can see, I um, kind of loosely drew the borders here from what I can tell on Google Earth. It borders Italy right here. The entirety of San Marino borders Italy, but Quaviva in particular has this border here with Italy. And then pretty much follows the various rivers that flow through San Marino. You can see right here, I think it's the Ora River. That in particular goes right through there. Now, Aquaviva is a very tiny place. San Marino is a very tiny country. So there's not much to go over in geography here, but you can see Monte Cerrito, or Monte Cerrito, is right here. It kind of takes up a good chunk of Aquaviva. And we'll talk about its importance and its history, which we're pretty much going to jump right into right now, which isn't a very long one. San Marino, if you haven't seen my video on it, I'll, if I remember, I'll link it up there. Um, has a really funny, interesting history, but it got its start because the namesake, San Marino, Saint Marinus, was escaping the town of Rimini on the coast of Italy. He was following the rivers down here. He was escaping because this lady claimed that he was the father of her child and he fervently denied it and he ran away. Was he, wasn't he kind of a moot point in history, to be honest? The fact is that he ran away. He followed the rivers down and one day he hid out in a cave right about here, which all the sources I read say is within Aquaviva, but not according to Google Earth. It cuts off right at the spot where this little overhang is, this little um, fissure, little crack in the, the big rock of the big mountain, Mount Titano. Um, so is it within Aquaviva, isn't it? It's also kind of a moot point. <laughs> it just is. So in... It must have been like the early 300, like the year 300. Um, while he was fleeing, he hid out in this little tiny fissure in this big mountain, which was owned by a family. Oh, I forgot her name. Donna. Darn, I forgot her name. But this lady owned the mountain and the area around it. Um, I guess she took pity on him or found him charming and let him stay and establish what would become San Marino in the year 301. And Aquaviva gets its name because he baptized her and her immediate family. I think it was about 30 members of her family in the river here. So, Aquaviva, water of life. Hence the name. Um, and... Honestly, that's about it. It was formally annexed into San Marino in 1243. When San Marino first got started in the early 300s, it was just the city here, San Marino, and pretty much the mountainous area. The other regions were slowly, like, um, did little votes to whether or not they wanted to join in with San Marino, and pretty much all the ones, I believe, that put that to the vote agreed to it. So... Aquaviva was one of the later joiners, I suppose. The rest kind of joined in about the 800, 900s, and then there were a couple others, I want to say, in the 1400s, but Aquaviva officially became part of San Marino in 1243, and it's been there ever since. And honestly, that's pretty much it for San Marino. Not much has gone on 
here in San Marino. The only thing that's really changed it in the past 30 years or so is the fact that they need that tourist money. They need reasons for people to visit other than to brag that they've been to San Marino, right? So particularly in the city of San Marino, there's lots of really strange um, like museums and kitschy touristy things, which are kind of charming in a way. <laughs> um, Aquaviva also has its own. For example, the rock where uh, St. Marin is hid out, it's called, let me check my notes, um, Baldo Serona is um, pretty much dominated by, um, one half is like a, a little museum sacred site, the castle where the the rich family and the lady that on the property lived is still there, but at the bottom of this cliff is a motocross speed track. You can race your motorcycles on it. And then I'll show you actually on Google Earth what they've done up on Monte Serrat. It's kind of cool and I kind of want to go there. If you've seen a lot of my Google Earth stuff, you know that, um, oh actually let me zoom this out first. Before the pandemic, I worked in the children's birthday party industry where I scheduled and ran birthday parties at um, children's like play park places. So Google really keeps wanting to show me children's play park places, like places you could have birthday parties at. So this popped up very first thing when I turned on Google Earth and that is San Marino Adventures sitting atop of, you can see right here, is the little mountain. But first, let's show you the important thing. Let's show you the historical thing before I show you the cute little kitschy touristy thing. Let's see, there's Monte Titano. So it's right down in here. You can see the, the motocross, Crossodromo right here. And up here, and this cliff is where he hid out. Up here is the castle. I believe the castle is in San Marino proper, not in Aquaviva. But down here, we can look at some pictures of this little fissure that he camped out in. There it is. That's where this man crawled into and slept in the previews. And there's the castle. And he squatted in that little area where he was found by the lady of the castle trying to find better pictures of it. Yep, right in there. Oop. <laughs> nice lovely views up and down and all around. That's up from the castle and people have left little flowers and candles and things there to honor St. Marinus or San Marino, the man himself. Beautiful, isn't it, man? Even though it's not Italy, you know, it's still that gorgeous Italian countryside, you know, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so up here on the big rock here is San Marino Adventures, which is the kitschy touristy thing that when you come to San Marino, oh my internet popped out, there it goes. <laughs> when you come to San Marino, you get to visit the adventures. <laughs> So let's see, there's lots of tree climbing and rock climbing, zip lining. There's a whole map of the area. It is dog friendly. <laughs> there is um, airsoft, I think, like um, paintballing, little shop slides. You can bring your dogs. It's dog friendly. That's, I assume, from above. That's way too high of a zip line. I would not be able to handle that. <laughs> and yeah rope bridge there. Lots of fun things to climb and play on for the whole family. That looks pretty challenging. Lots of fun things. I was looking at reviews on Google Maps and like one of the little attractions there had um, what I assume in Italian. It had a picture of Gandalf like from Lord of the Rings on it and I'm pretty sure it said you shall not pass <laughs> unless you're this height. Very funny. Good job, whoever did that. Here's the little town area. As you can see, there's the village. There's the business side of it. There's some sports sta stadiums there. 
um, not like, you know, like football stadiums or anything, just like practice, you know, to train. And Italy is just over there, isn't that interesting? So that is pretty much it for Aquaviva. So beautiful. I wonder if I can show you. Oh, is it gonna go? Aquaviva. There we go. I'll try to show you some good pictures. I don't think there's any good ones in this slideshow. There's only three, but it's that beautiful, picturesque Italian countryside, right? So much to it. Where was it? I found a little park somewhere that had pretty pictures. Um, I don't know where it was. I think it was up on the rock here. No, it's not that. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to find it, unfortunately. But it was more pictures of rolling green, beautiful Italian hills and things like that. <laughs> very, very lovely. Let me zoom out a bit so you can kind of see exactly where we are within Italy. And there we are. If you can see that's Rimini. And we are near, let's see, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump from Florence. So in northern Italy, right? That's where San Marino is. Very interesting history. If you want to know more, please check out my San Marino video where I go way more in depth in its history, but honestly, that's about it. <laughs> I assume when I get to the other little communes, they're called our Castellis of San Marino, it's gonna be pretty much the same kind of history, but you know, it's a beautiful spot in the world. I'll be happy to revisit it. Next, however, in my ASMR Around the World series, I'll be going to Brazil for a little change of pace very different from this. And, um, if you kind of figured out the order, I'm obviously going in alphabetical order. We're going to be going into the Amazon. Not Amazonas, but you'll see what I mean in a few days. <laughs> I'll stop babbling. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing because this is going to be an ongoing series that I'm going to be doing for a long time, let's put it that way. A very long time. If you're a channel member, I did the math and I figured out how long it's going to take to do this series, so my channel members know and are prepared. <laughs> So yes, please consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in your subscription feed. Thank you so much and have a very good, 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 good.